Hey, good afternoon everybody. My name is Paul and welcome back to the W1 VLF Lab. Sitting out in back before eating pork rinds on the deck, drinking my favorite beverage, Moxie. And I was thinking about the video and some of the questions that came up and uh, I thought of another way of, uh, of addressing this, finding the resonant frequency of a loop. And also, the loop allows you to do something that a lot of guys <laughs> that a lot of guys suffer from and that is front end overload especially if you have the one of these little RTLs if you have a tiny little RTL um, where they don't put in front end filtering they don't have a lot of dynamic range um, this this could be particularly useful for you all right so I got my notes right um, oh yeah, I want to thank the two people who subscribed, both of you, um, and, and also the people who put the comments in there. I really appreciate that. Um, makes me think that at least somebody's watching. Thanks an awful lot. I, I do appreciate it. So, what are we going to need today? You got one of these, right? The SDR Play. This is, what, this is a really nice um, SDR receiver. What is this one? This one's the uh, RSP2. Wow, I guess I went for the big for the big bucks. Um, but the cool part about this is it has a balanced input, and the nice thing about the balanced input is it's a 1k ohm input impedance. So that means let me grab something here. Always forget everything. That with our two clip leads. This time we're using two clip leads. Okay, with our two clip leads. And our loop and our little 365 puff uh, tuning. Oh, there goes the furnace. Hang on, I'm shutting that right off. There. I showed that who's boss. Um, so we're going to look at, again, how to find resonance. But also, even more important than that, um, a lot of these little receivers don't have good front ends on them. And this, this loop, this loop, uh, especially this loop because it's made with Litz wire, uh, has a very high Q, which means you can select out a group of stations that you want to listen to. And so you're not going to be bombarded by uh, a huge complement of AM broadcast stations. And I have a lot of broadcast stations that are pretty close to where I am. So let me set up with the laptop. I'm going to be using console 3. I'm going to be using the uh, SDR Play 2, the high input impedance side, and we'll sweep through the uh, whole entire broadcast band. And then you can see just how selective this is and how envisioning how that would eliminate an overload problem. Uh, along with the ability to uh, tune this. We won't, I mean, uh, turn this, uh, that's going to be kind of difficult for me to do, but uh, the selectivity and where your loop is resonant will be uh, become painfully, painfully obvious. So let me set up for that, put this stuff down, um, and see what I can do about setting up for the next shot. Okay? I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. All right, so you guys remember this, right? This loop, eight inch PVC, uh, Litz wire, nothing special there. I did mount it on top of a little piece of plastic so it would stand up straight without falling over. The other thing I have here, you remember this as well, just a standard tuning capacitor connected to a couple of terminals so they can easily th take things off without having to use a lot of clip leads. And yes, here are the clip leads. This time we're going to use two clip leads um, connected to the high impedance input, 1000 ohm input of the SDR play. All right, and the idea here at this time is that when the loop is resonated to a specific frequency, a field is generated around that loop. And the higher the Q, the greater the field is. The higher the Q, the narrower the band pass is. And we're going to extract some of that with just this one turn of, co of um, clip lead here. Actually, it's two clip leads. And 
this is typically how you extract a um, signal out of a um, tuned loop. Now you could use a ferrite, you can use, you do all sorts of things, but you have one resonating um, set of turns and the other one is to extract power. So I will set up the laptop so we can take a look at what happens as I tune across. Okay, no big deal here, stand by, I'll be back in a minute. All right, I'm back. We're tuned to the broadcast band. 400 kilohertz is on the end here. 400 kilohertz here. And 1800 kilohertz there. This is not easy to do. Anyway, that's the AM broadcast band. There's a little bit of energy getting in because of the two clip leads. I don't know if you can see this. Here's those two clip leads, right? But... So how many of you guys suffer from this? Okay, unbelievable overload, and that's just me as a uh, as the antenna. I'm just holding on to the wire, to the one clip lead. All right, there's just a ton of noise, uh, overload, intermod products being generated from all those really big broadcast signals. So I'm going to connect the loop back together again to two clip leads. All right. So now there's essentially nothing there. You're going to have to trust me on this. I'll show you a picture of it in a second. But I'm going to take the loop and I'm going to wrap the clip lead around it, loosely couple it one time. Okay. So now you see there's a very small section of the AM broadcast. Remember all those signals were way up here, you know, overloading everything? Very small section of the AM broadcast band available. So let's say you have a big one like I do, a 610, which is off the air right now, right down here. But look at look at that noise floor is it's almost completely quiet. Let's tune across. Okay. Every time I move across and you see one of those peaks pop up, that's an AM broadcast station that I'm on. And I've tuned right to that one. Let's just take a listen. I don't want to get in trouble because one time I had music and uh, uh, YouTube got upset. So here we go. Let's find a, find a good station, nice, strong one. There's one. But you can see how you, it's very touchy, all right? So let's tune to that. Let's see what that is. Yeah, I don't want to bring it up too loud. Okay, but pretty easy to see. So with this capacitor, I'm tuning from 500 kilohertz, where I am right now, Okay, there's a big one right there, big big signal right there. And look at how weak all these other ones are. Let's let me open up the capacitor, the uh, coupling loop again, so you can get a better look at that. Okay, just incredible the amount of pre-selecting capability that you get when you use a high Q loop like this. Okay, so here we go. We're tuning again. Well, let's go up in frequency. This, this one right here is probably a big one because it's sneaking through. Whoa, it is a big one. Let's see if that if we can get that. Okay. Slid it back down in frequency. Let's go back up. So I, I don't want to let the music come through because YouTube's uh, sensors will be in my face. Okay, back, let me turn it down a little bit. But that's all. I'll shoot, give you another shot at the very end here of what I'm doing. Basically, one turn loop into the 500, the uh, 1K input impedance of the, of the SDR play. That loop that we used before, in parallel with it, is the 365 picofarads. So let's just see where it's, how far it tunes. At 1600 kilohertz. So, and now on the bottom end, that's 500 kilohertz. So, I might be able to do a little something, maybe a turn or two off of here to, uh, to get it to extend up a little higher frequency. But again, just an example of a tool that you have, and you, and you may be able to do this on the 50 ohm input. Um, I think it would 
the Q of the Q of the filter or the Q of your pre-selector loop combination would not be as high. And so instead of being able to select out single stations, you would probably select out um, larger quantities, three or four stations. But really, think about it. If this was a big a big station that was dominating your your uh, the spectrum and causing overload, well, let's just select that right out of there. Here's another big one. See that? Look how how much that is compared to when I get on top of it. It's a uh, it's like 40 dB different. And again, this is all just thrown together. So that's it. I'm going to uh, finish up here, show you how this exactly is set up, and I'll be right back. Okay, that's it. Let me turn this around. Notice how I don't make any effort to really finesse these things. Let me turn the viewfinder around. Um, right, SDR play into the 1K ohm input, balance line input. Just wrap it around the loop here. And let's see, if you could still see that, I'll slide it up and down a little bit while you're, while you're watching. Okay, so that's it. Uh, see if there's any final thoughts. If I can think of anything decent to say, I'll, I'll be back. Okay, so I hope everybody enjoyed that, or I hope some, somebody enjoyed that. Um, pretty straightforward, pretty simple stuff here. Uh, a, couple of, a couple of notes. Um, if you build a loop, for instance, that is two feet on a side, like an X loop or a box loop, and you space the uh, turns maybe a quarter of an inch apart, the Q will go up. The selectivity of that filter, of that filter, I keep calling it a filter because it kind of is, the, uh, the selectivity of that loop will go up. It will narrow down to so steep, so straight, uh, the sides will be so steep uh, that you almost can pull one side band out of uh, an AM carrier from the other one. I've had that happen um, when it built Q, Q loops that were too high at Q. And the, and the problem with that is if, if the wind blow, if you have this thing outside, the wind blows or it gets wet, it spoils the queue and it detunes itself. So that could be a bit of a problem. But, um, and you, but with that wider spacing of the turns, you don't have as much inter-turn capacitance, which means it's going to resonate higher in frequency, so you may need some more turns rather you know, than if you closely spaced it. But what it also means is that the parallel C the 365 puff capacitor here will give you some more some more range. And these were, I built loops as as high as um, let me think. I'm not sure how well they worked at 10 meters. Um, I had ways of tapping the different loops and things. These were all air cores that that I'm talking about. Um, but this will work in the in the hundreds of kilohertz range if you're into listening to non-directional beacons, let's say. Uh, and you have a lot of AM broadcast that is giving you a real hard time down there. That's that's a typical problem with some of the some of the uh, lesser expensive SDRs. Um, you can use this as a selectable filter. All depends on the amount of turns, the spacing, and you actually have a tool now, so you don't have to be afraid that oh geez, I have no idea where this thing is tuning, and you can see it. So anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. My name is Paul W1VLF. 73s, and I'm good in a call book. Here's a quick look at a couple of the loops that I built in the past. Um, this one's made with that same PVC pipe. Um, it rotates on a, on a base. Uh, there's a little Lazy Susan underneath that cherry wood, and there's a little brass handle that allows you to tilt the, uh, the loop itself so you can sort of null out um, the stations you don't want. So you get the ability to rotate it and also to tilt it. Here's another one that was made out of, um, I can't really see, I think it's made out of cherry. Um, but you notice that there's several windings on it. The smallest winding in the middle is the coupling loop that goes to a PL259 chassis mount on the back. 
The other loops that you see there are switchable by that little switch in the front and they go in either series or parallel. So when they're in series, it covers lower frequencies and when they're in parallel, it covers much higher frequencies. And then the actual tuning per to the station you're interested in happens with the, the knob there on the front of the unit. Number three here is a slightly different design. I think early on I was trying different uh, techniques to see what worked best. It's kind of a spider web looking thing, um, wound from the center out. Still, still worked out really well. Um, all these, uh, believe it or not, people actually paid for these things. Um, but they all, and they all worked really well and they all, all were uh, tunable. This one probably was set up for the AM broadcast band. It's been so long I don't really remember now. Another one um, using uh, this time walnut and red enameled wire. Tried to fancy this one up slightly, but the same configuration with the series parallel loops, the coupling coil in the middle, a little switch for making them in series and parallel, and then a tuning knob in the front. And of course, my trusty ICF 2010 Sony. Love that radio. Love it. Another attempt at um, a tunable loop. This one had uh, uh, binding posts to bring to bring the uh, signal out. So if you need it, you were going to use a balanced line. That's what this was for, and kind of and a very very crude construction. I think this was probably one of the very first ones that I made. Uh, but still, uh, the construction aside, it still physically worked well. So you can see that all these different loops. I really wasn't sure where I was going with them. But uh, I use those same techniques that I showed in my videos uh, to tune them up and to get them, you know, working properly. Well, I think I take that back. This may be one of the first ones. I think it was, I just learned how to uh, use a cove bit uh, on a router. But uh, the rest of it was uh, <laughs> Home Depot 1x2s, uh, I think that maybe is, uh, in oak. Um, and I was experimenting around with tilting mechanisms here. Um, you can get the best null by orientating this loop broad, broadside to the broadcast station you're trying to null uh, and also tilting it. Um, and between those two you can achieve some really, really uh, deep nulls. So that's it for now. Thanks a lot for watching and bearing with me. This is W1VLF73.